Good morning, everybody. My name is Jason Fox. I'm the uh, Senior Technical Evangelist, and uh, today I'm, I'm joined by Asma Tamala and uh, uh, Professor Ali Ben Brahim uh, to cover uh, leveraging NGSI in university courses. So let's find out what we're going to be covering today. This is a uh, somewhat different session in that we've got uh, multiple uh, um, uh, presenters here, and basically, uh, um, Ali and uh, Asma are marking my homework. First thing I'm going to be doing is to uh, briefly explain what uh, assets there are already out there, mainly from the Fireware Foundation, which uh, can be used for uh, uh, university courses, before we go into an in-depth deep dive of how, to, how this uh, stuff is actually being used out there. Thereafter, um, uh, we get the feedback of saying, well, did it make any sense? Um, is it a case of uh, is, is it a case of that you know, this stuff is relevant? Is it stuff uh, what what works, what what doesn't? And finally, we'll uh, we'll end up covering the uh, the university roadshow within the uh, um, the structure of a course. Uh, it's necessary to uh, to cover things such as um, what technologies make sense to combine with fireware, what sort of courses need to be covered before you deal with fireware, how long you do it, and actually do the uh, university learning stuff as well. So uh, I'm going to be relatively brief here, but I will uh, um, start off by explaining what what is what have we actually got. So what learning materials are actually available? Uh, as you know, um, Fireware is uh, an open source uh, initiative for defining the uh, uh, a set of standards for uh, context data management. Now, this is usually reduced to um, uh, five bullet points if you want to get someone to understand what fireware is uh, uh, in th in 30 seconds and it's it, it's a it's a rest API which uh, is based uh, usually the uh, a binding of uh, HTTP uh, there are other bindings available for uh, um, uh, NGSI uh, according to the uh, um, the Etsy specification but it's usually uh, based on uh, HTTP and it's it's very opinionated it does it does your HTTP verbs the way you're supposed to do it. It doesn't give you back uh, um, you know, payloads when you're not expecting it. Uh, and the structure of the data is um, structured JSON, so JSON with uh, uh, certain rules attached. Or in the case of NGSILD, it's uh, obviously JSON-LD. Now, there are really only two other things beyond CRUD, which are, are covered by uh, um, uh, uh, NGSI. So that's registrations and uh, uh, and uh, sub and subscriptions. Don't need to go into full details of what the uh, um, uh, how the API works. That's going to be covered uh, uh, la later on, later on the system. But you can see it's a relatively simple API. So it's so it's uh, the sort of thing which could be introduced into a university course as an introduction to how you're supposed to do these things. Every part of the uh, NGSI V2 NGSI LD. Uh, um, uh, uh, API is based on other international standards. If you take the uh, um, NGSILD, for example, you can see the uh, uh, that's being specified by Etsy on the uh, the right hand side. It ha has got a, a series of approximately 30, 40 uh, normative refer references at the top of that specification, which says, okay, this is how you're supposed to use. JSON LD. This is how you're supposed to use REST. This is how you're supposed to uh, rely on the various um, uh, um, IETF um, uh, recommendations so that we are using JSON properly. We're using GeoJSON properly. We define our URNs properly. As I said, this is not uh, a case of making up as we're going along. And the, obviously, the whole point of uh, um, uh, uh, this is not to surprise your developers, or in this case, your students. So you've got. Uh, a possibility to leverage a large number of useful international standards when you are teaching this uh, teaching this course. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, stuff out there which you can use. There's uh, the uh, um, obviously the elements of the Fireware catalog, uh, which I can show you here. What do you go to the catalog? Uh, so the uh, Fireware catalog um, is. Um, on the uh, um, uh, on, on GitHub, it's got a large number of free open source uh, um, uh, free open source elements which you can use to download, use, and to uh, implement with your uh, uh, project. We've also uh, we've also got the uh, um, uh, various uh, tutorials, the Fireware step by step, which is split into 
smart supermarket for um, NGSI V2, smart farm for uh, uh, NGSI LD. The uh, um, information coming from the uh, um, Fireware Foundation is usually under an MIT license, which is basically use it, but uh, um, uh, just realize that this is coming for us. The licenses from the various elements uh, in the Fireware catalog can vary. They can be more copy left, but you're less likely to be uh, um, uh, modifying the uh, uh, generic enablers if you are uh, running a university course. You just uh, want to use the, uh, the um, software as is. Lots of uh, code samples, lots of, uh, um, of documentation. Now, the learning materials can be split into multiple different areas. Um, as, uh, as, as noted, there's this um, um, Fireware Smart Supermarket, which is uh, um, used for the NGSI V2 tutorials, uh, uh, with the uh, alternative being for the NGSI LD. Um, we have a large number of webinars, uh, which this is one, uh, which are, again, uh, you can sort and uh, retrieve online, but we also have uh, longer form videos. Longer form videos could be three or four hours of uh, explaining what is a digital twin, what is uh, how to uh, set up the uh, distributed trust or what have you. Now, in this case, um, a lot of these materials are available directly to our iHubs or our membership on request so that you can take, take the set of uh, um, uh, um, materials, modify it for your own needs and uh, um, uh, use it within your own uh, uh, courses. There are lots and lots of third party resources, not just the Fireware Foundation. We are just a, uh, an enabler for the uh, um, uh, inf information. There are you know, plenty of companies like Telefonica, Atos, NEC, uh, University of Madrid, uh, who are uh, creating uh, um, uh, software based on the uh, um, uh, NGSI uh, uh, information. And uh, they also obviously uh, offer uh, um, documentation for these, uh, these components. Um, if we go here, for example, here's the uh, uh, here's the um, uh, LoRa One IoT agent introduction of how to use LoRa One, uh, but also how to install the uh, the system and how to uh, get this to connect to a, uh, a context broker. If you're after a context broker, take Scorpio for example. There's lots and lots of information how to set the thing up, uh, how to uh, deal with with error handling, and of course the classic hello world example of how to uh, uh, create an entity and put this into the system. You don't have to use the information directly from the uh, Fireware Foundation. You can use information from other uh, uh, um, uh, other sources as well. The uh, um, you get uh, information from other third parties. So, for example, if you go to the uh, the um, Fireware Awesome GitHub, it links to uh, multiple uh, um, third party sources. Hey, you can get stuff in Japanese. Um, another point there. Uh, you can get there is that uh, it is possible to uh, uh, create um, a fireware system which is a deployment at scale. There's a, uh, a separate uh, um, uh, organization on GitHub called Fireware Ops, which is purely for uh, operation stuff. The downside of the uh, 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 tutorial materials as is, is that they are designed to explain the interfaces, not create systems which are uh, uh, usable, uh, usable at scale. Now, Fireware itself is not an IoT platform. It, it connects to uh, existing uh, uh, IoT. And it's, uh, similarly, it's not a data analysis tool. It's uh, this layer which separates uh, your um, incoming data via a context broker going up, to, uh, a, a, going up to either visualizations or processing. So therefore, if you want to connect um, IoT using MQTT, well, there's information direct from the MQTT people. There's information direct from OPC UA. You can use uh, um, uh, Apache sources such as Spark, Flink, or you can use other um, uh, third, uh, other uh, open source third parties uh, sources to get your information. So there's a lot of uh, uh, things you potentially could use with Fireware. Let's find out what it's going to be all about. So over to you, Ali. Who are you and explain what you're going to be talking about. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Great. Well, I am Ali Ben Brahim, and uh, I am teaching here in uh, Tunisia for the uh, Subcom School in Tunis. For it is an engineering school, um, and uh, I am teaching uh, clouds 
system standard, what are the system for the cloud information systems, what is interoperability, how to use it, what are the use cases we can use. I am also teaching uh, IoT system and uh, all the protocol involved in the uh, IoT uh, system. Well, I am here today and I am ha very happy and honored uh, to uh, present how we can, uh, uh, what and how we can use this uh, huge uh, quantity of content that uh, Fireware give us in order to support our teaching and our courses to the students. Um, it is dedicated, it can be dedicated to uh, ICT students, but it can be also dedicated uh, to uh, several domains um, uh, teaching, such as industry, agri-tech, or any other, and I'll show you uh, what and uh, how. I will be uh, starting by presenting all, let's say, not all the tools, but the main tools that used in order to build the framework uh, that the trainers and the teachers will be having to use it, uh, and then showing uh, what are the uh, domain to be used and how we can uh, use it for the uh, domain of applications. Well, as Jason was saying, Fireware is an open source. So this is one of the first points that to make understand to uh, the student what is open source. And this is w one of the main concepts uh, to show them that the community of the engineers and of the developers in ICT uh, uh, how they build open source, why they build open source, what the objective to use the open source. It's not only because it's free, but it is also uh, to build uh, the concept of the common goods in order to build community, uh, in order to build, uh, let's say, uh, to, to have these solutions in order to maintain business and in order to maintain the technology sustainability. So uh, this framework will equip, w w is available for free for you, and it will equip the trainers and the teacher in order to build uh, your assets for the courses, even if you are uh, teaching IoT, so you can use all these set of tools uh, delivered by Fireware in order to show and uh, bring all these concepts to the teachers, but also the big data, the robotics, the security systems, and several tools in machine learning, art, art, uh, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence, and much more. Uh, after open source concepts, the, the first main open source is a digital twin and to explain what is a digital twin by example, by uh, showing exactly what it means and why it's meaningful um, and why and why and how the context uh, building into the digital twin concept is important. That means to, to take example one by one, for example, in a smart city, so in order to build the digital twin, uh, for example, always taking an example as a transportation of a bus from a point A to B and how to build the digital twin around this solution, for example, to display the position of the bus or any incident happening to the bus and taking all the data from several sources into a standard system thanks to NGSI standard. And so we can have several source of information and then we can build the digital twin, update in real time the digital twin. And uh, at the end, why it is useful, you know, uh, it is useful to achieve 
the building of a solution and to build the application that uh, is uh, requested. So for, to, in order to build the digital twin, we, we will explain that we need a standard, uh, a standard to exchange data from one system to another. So this standard is already uh, explained by Jason in the beginning, the use of the NGSILD or NGSI V2, and then I'll explain why to use this version or the other version. The NGSI is already a very powerful REST uh, API. That means it is uh, accessible in the understanding for every student. It's already on the, uh, let's say, uh, web HTTP uh, and all the already known uh, standard and protocol by the student. So it's very, there is very simple operation uh, in, in two requests to push and pull information, update information, patch information, delete information. Uh, but it's also having a very powerful, um, so explaining to the student that we need also very powerful requests like geo queries and why is it, why is it uh, um, useful, but also uh, uh, complex queries like subscription into the digital twin, notification into the digital twin, and then having the application and algorithm into the digital twin in order to, to, uh, to build the, this uh, solution. But also having so other sorts of uh, queries like uh, request multiple data or push multiple data into the digital twin. Uh, so this, um, this architecture or this framework will explain what are the tools that we have been used uh, by uh, by the framework uh, deployed by Fireware. So in this in the uh, in the middle we have the context broker. So uh, there are several context brokers. Orion is built by Telefonica. Others are built by EGM or by any NEC. But the the main one we are using is Orion built by Telefonica. And uh, this core uh, system is the uh, uh, the representation and the image of the digital twin. It's include uh, a, a database that having all the data that represent and materialize the digital twin, and it will it will exchange data on one side from all the data sources to be pushed or to be pulled, the IoT systems. So how to exchange data with the IoT systems, but also with uh, any open data um, system available uh, to access to weather data or to access to uh, geographic data or GIS data, but also to CCTV data. So. Uh, Using the NGSI interoperability standard will allow us uh, to access a, a, a multiple and uh, uh, a big system uh, quantity of uh, protocols and uh, data. And on the right side, on the, the the right side, what we are being doing with this data. So we we would like to have persistence data, so we can store them into a uh, Hadoop system or uh, uh, SQL type system, uh, or we would like to have a BI uh, uh, analyzing tool, uh, EI algorithms or whatever, or displaying the information as a monitoring. So there are a set of, let's say 30 or 40 uh, type of tool that can, we, so we can build the framework for any uh, domain type. It is very useful 
it is um, there is no programming tool in order to build a very complex uh, solution. So, for example, for IoT systems, the context this context broker is the core interoperability, as I'll show you. Uh, once the context is defined, so we we are pushing and pulling data into the digital twin in order to have to monitor the system. So with the student, we can we can um, once uh, they build this framework, they can see how useful and how the chain of information is going from the sensor into uh, the database or into the monitoring system. So they can see what is the importance of every node in the chain system. So it will facilitate the communication on several uh, protocol. So the student will be seeing how to use the HTTP protocol, the MQTT protocol or call, but also a very uh, higher end protocol like LoRaWAN or Sigfox. And they will understand not only on the let's say uh, IoT system, but from A to Z, what all the nodes are doing and also why security is important, what, how the databases have been used and so on. There are several tools to simulate IoT, so we do not have to have a specific uh, hardware device, but we can also use very common device like ESP32 or Arduino or whatever. So the uh, possibility to create the courses for the IoT is, uh, uh, is very big and very useful. But also uh, concerning the, uh, the database, uh, to have persistent data into database, so uh, several tools such, such as Cygnus, Comet or create DB uh, uh, can be used in order to access or uh, make the data persistent because inside the digital twin the data is not persistent and how to push the data we will be showing to the student how to push the data into the database but also how to collect the data from the database in order to uh, monitor or analyze or whatever um, so it can can be here uh, for on this architecture uh, we are doing time series database uh, with uh, these uh, tools which is quantum leap who's accessing into the NGSC standard into the Orion context by subscription mode notification mode and then recorded into the credit DB database so we can then um, monitor the, the information, historical information, by a monitoring tool uh, such as uh, Grafana. So this is one of the simplest way to show how to uh, collect data from data sources like Open Data or IoT or whatever, and then create this um, uh, digital twin and store it into a database. Next slide, Jason, thank you. But it can be also more complex with other tools like Draco, uh, which is uh, an uh, adapt adaptation of uh, the Ap uh, Apache Niki. Uh, so we, how to access, uh, collect, uh, and push and pull uh, into several type of database MySQL, Postgres, or even MongoDB or others, uh, and access to existing also database uh, into uh, existing uh, system. So also for uh, the, 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 uh, the courses on the use of the databases, also the uh, framework of Fiverr is very useful in order uh, to explain how 
easy integration uh, uh, of the database is made into uh, A to Z solution. Also in the uh, in the robotics system, uh, the uh, several uh, tools are useful into several um, uh, robotics protocol or uh, embedded uh, operating system such as uh, real-time operation system ROS or ROS2 or whatever. Um, so the uh, context broker and uh, the creation of the digital twin is very useful in order uh, to prepare to build uh, these uh, uh, type of uh, edge computing in order to ask to uh, uh, send uh, orders or monitor uh, the uh, robotic systems. So, uh, but also um, there are several tools if uh, we are using uh, machine learning or um, uh, BI with uh, Apache Flink or Apache Spark. Uh, there are several example and use case uh, and step-by-step -step building um, in order to use the uh, Apache uh, Flink or Apache uh, Spark. It is very useful because, uh, as you know, it's not that simple that Apache Flink or Apache Spark can access to existing data. But with the NGSI, uh, it will be more useful uh, to make Apache Flink or Apache Spark get into the data and make the data and the existing data from IoT or open data or whatever, uh, make it persistent into uh, MongoDB and then collect and uh, make queries into um, these, uh, these data for whatever application based on these uh, very useful uh, Apache tools. Also for monitoring, um, uh, mo monitoring um, uh, data, uh, several tools are used. Um, there is a, a firewall tools called the uh, White Cloud. When uh, it's very useful and very flexible in order uh, to uh, design and uh, present the several uh, monitoring uh, windows into the screen. So they can, you can build whatever monitoring system in the real time or whatever uh, GIS uh, application can access to the uh, uh, data from sensor and whatever. But also it is useful when uh, DNGSI is, can allow the accessing, uh, can allow other monitor tools such as Grafana or any, any other. And also uh, the, um, uh, the concept of uh, agnostic security system that means the security system that is independent to the architecture or to the application that have been uh, set uh, for, the, uh, for the application. So it is uh, to explain the, this concept and why it is useful uh, several um, several tools um, are provided by uh, by Fireware, uh, such as uh, uh, user access control, but also also at the microservice, um, uh, but also at the maker microservice uh, level, uh, so we can control all the. Uh, restful access to the uh, to the to the uh, any of the tools. Um, uh, important point is every tools like the context broker or any database or any agent to access IoT are um, by uh, creation in a uh, in a microservice uh, type. So it is. Uh, very easy to build, very easy to deploy, and um, uh, very easy also to configure. The, uh, these are, well, a set uh, of uh, tools that been, have been uh, used by, um, uh, by us as a trainer. Uh, 
but uh, as trainer, I am also collaborating with other domain, for example, in my case, in the uh, agri-tech system. So uh, showing how these framework can be used in the several uh, domain. So it is one concept, concept of digital twin, concept of IoT, concept of big data, and the use of the big data uh, can be used in all the domains, agri-tech, industry, uh, e-health, um, energy. And so we can, we do not have any specialized tools, you know, for, uh, for a domain or another. Uh, and then it's very easy for, uh, for the teacher, for the student, or for the experts to collect all this uh, ICT knowledge in order to collaborate with several domains. It is also open source, so there is no license, no blocking purpose or tool in order, well, that may, that uh, uh, that will have cost and will have uh, uh, several uh, issues. Uh, it is robust, it's flexible, it's scalable, it's also secured by the security system. It, it integrates a wide range of ICT technology and protocols. Uh, it is based on the interoperability and open standards. So uh, once you created one, even when the, uh, the student is creating one, it is very useful to reproduce from one domain, from, from in, inside the domain, uh, in one side to another, but can be reused from one domain to another, readapted, um, and then that it's really flexible and it's really uh, useful for any domain. So it can it can be used in the uh, digital twin uh, concept. For example, uh, once we creating this digital twin representation, uh, and also using all these uh, data models that have been uh, standardized and created. We at Fireware we have more, I think, more than 1,000 of data models that can be reused and um, uh, explained to the uh, uh, to the student why it is useful to have the same data model. So we can share application, we can reuse application, and then. Create uh, for this example uh, city smart city um, uh, solution or example or use case. So it can all these tools is uh, actually there is I think more than 200 cities over the world using uh, the, this framework to uh, to show it is uh, it is very useful and also in agri tech. Uh, for have any uh, precision production or uh, any um, intens intensive production, the use of the IoT, uh, the use of the um, open data, weather data, and so on, collect data, and uh, having um, a uh, a DSS system uh, to farmers uh, and uh, to stakeholders in the territory or a, or a region. Uh, several uh, tens of use cases are existing for the uh, agri-tech, can be reused and can be uh, explained for, uh, for territories. Also for the industry, for the manufacturing, uh, the use uh, of the uh, robotics system, the use of the uh, uh, the access uh, to the edge computing is very new, also useful uh, to build application uh, for the uh, industry. Also, yes, also for the energy, for, uh, for the renewable energy to represent uh, um, a digital twin that represents um, any value on the uh, smart, uh, uh, smart network uh, of energy to collect data from the energy network and uh, to have a very complex application um, uh, on the balance of uh, the energy. Several applications already existed uh, in Scandinavia, I think. 
so yes so you see that uh, several uh, mainly most all the domain are covered and uh, a lot of use cases are existed uh, so so as you see uh, we uh, we have been talking on ngsi two version of ngsi ngsi v2 and ngsi ld so all the two types of the uh, ngsi uh, are, are slightly different uh, uh, NGSI v2 is uh, mainly based on the uh, interoperability uh, and uh, when we have uh, a simple solution or one unique solution uh, that will collect data from several uh, IoT or data sources or open data, we should use NGSI v2 because it is simple to use, simple to deploy. Um, uh, and uh, uh, very quick also to deploy. But when we have uh, several systems uh, in over, let's say over several departments or several ministry or several domains, uh, and we have uh, distributed data, distributed uh, data on, uh, let's say, um, several databases, uh, and so we'll, and also very important when we have several contexts and we would like to collect data from one other part to another, to another and um, create, let's say, these uh, distributed application over uh, several systems, then we will be using the uh, NGSILD, NGSILD for linked data. That means that the data into the uh, digital twin is not, uh, uh, let's say, information is not inside the the, uh, the uh, digital twin. But we, we will find a link concerning the context that will push us in, a, in another system. Well, it is a new concept. It's very interesting and uh, very useful. Uh, when we are creating very complex and on several domains, um, the use of uh, NGSILD, particularly for uh, the courses I'm doing, I mainly use uh, the NGSIV2, which is uh, straight, uh, straightforward to the uh, to the objective of explaining uh, what is uh, 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 concretely and uh, really an interoperability, how it works and how it is materialized. So uh, in my courses, uh, this is one of the picture we're having at Sipcom. Uh, what we have, we have, a, we have a server at our university premises. Uh, it's a uh, hosting, uh, uh, we, we are hosting one architecture per student. That means uh, when we will be having 10 to 15 students, we will have something like uh, 15 to 20 um, uh, VMs. Uh, uh, we are, we, I have created several uh, uh, templates of uh, virtual machines that I can duplicate for the student. So the student will be used uh, uh, when they get to classes, he will get access to the VM. Um, most of the time, I'm asking the student to discover things by themselves. So, for example, in the uh, uh, in the courses, I will ask them, okay, the next course, we will be doing this and this and this. Uh, I will ask you to get into the fiber content and uh, to explain what you are you have uh, understand. That that that's why also why the uh, online content of fiber is useful. So uh, inside the server, the firewall tools can pre-exist or not. That means uh, the student can start from blank or start from something. For example, for any domain use case built, we um, uh, 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 I already have some template of uh, persistent data. I already have uh, uh, some uh, template for IoT. Uh, uh, existing IoT systems. So it, it, we have several templates that can be useful. It will depend on the content you're uh, deploying uh, to uh, your uh, courses. 
the session length is a uh, well uh, more or less uh, nine uh, three hours. Uh, we are using ninety minutes plus ninety minutes, and uh, during the first hour, explaining all the uh, concept and the theory concept, and then. Uh, we'll go for the two next two hours into the practical uh, session. Usually, it's always the same uh, every time for the course. So uh, the overall duration is uh, five to ten sessions, depending on what we are, uh, what what is the uh, course is about. Um, so uh, uh, so we will be uh, the, the, we will creating. Uh, we will ask for the student to create the architectures. And then, next slide. And then we are creating a sort of groups. So uh, we can, for example, in this example, we, we will be having five groups. For the, uh, for the first group, we will be deploying the IoT system. The second group will be deploying uh, the access uh, to the uh, open data system. The other groups will be accessing to an application that will be showing uh, the uh, stakeholder use on the system. The other one will be uh, uh, the build of the database, and the last one will be uh, uh, will be using the monitoring system. Each of these groups will have his uh, um, the system to build, but also the context broker. So they will always have the two systems and they will work together in order to define what would be the data model, the selection of the data model that they will all be uh, using. And then at uh, the examination will be about uh, what they have doing in, into the uh, solution build, but also into the interaction they have internally. Normally, uh, the group is consisted by two or three persons. So how the two or three persons have been working together, but also the interaction between the groups, how they are working together, and what they are, uh, how they have been using all these uh, standards. So this is the uh, now since uh, three to four years I'm using this methodology and I think it's very useful. Uh, the student looks like they they like it uh, and um, they, they like the way they build solution. They, they like the way uh, they do not have uh, to create codes or things like that. They they like the way. Uh, for the interaction of the group. They like the way to use of the uh, uh, standards because they find everything online. And uh, most of the time, the ex examination is based on these uh, three or two uh, methodology. This is the courses I am, uh, I am taking care of now for for the uh, innovation and the research uh, into the university. Uh, so the, uh, the server is also used for uh, uh, showing some use case. Uh, so the open source nature and extensive documentation on create the innovation, uh, the innovation of and uh, research. Uh, actually, uh, the fireware framework is uh, very welcome into the course of the uh, European Union uh, research project. That means that uh, in the course, when we are showing that we are using uh, this framework, they, um, uh, they, 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 you will probably have a better note and uh, they will like it very much. Uh, so for the researchers, these, uh, all these components, all these tools are open access uh, the um, several researchers and developers are already have the skills and the knowledge on the tools, so we can create collaboration. You can jump into uh, uh, these uh, worker groups. Several innovative and in innovative solutions are inside of uh, the um, uh, fiber uh, frameworks. 
we have several communities of universities, several innovation hubs already based uh, on uh, innovative, uh, already based in the uh, university. You can jump, jump on, on this community and create uh, this uh, collaboration. That's it. This is, uh, this is it for me. Okay, so uh, that was the uh, introduction of the course. Now we're going to pass on to uh, Asma, who's actually been through this course, uh, to uh, uh, tell us whether it's any good or not. So over to you, Asma. Explain who you are and, and why you're in a position to, uh, uh, to give uh, feedback. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I am Asma Tamala, and I am an ICT engineering student uh, at SUPCOM. Uh, actually, I took this course uh, last year with uh, Mr. Ali and I thank him very much for giving me uh, all the knowledge I needed and um, also the hands-on experience. It was really um, a great experience and I enjoyed it a lot. And now I'm going to, to give my feedback about what worked well in the course and what things to avoid and um, also the relevance of this course in my study program. Um, an important thing to mention here is that uh, as a student, um, I, uh, like uh, all the students should be provided with detailed information about uh, the course before uh, they select it. Um, providing a summary section uh, stating the main points covered during the course, uh, also a prerequisite section and the type of examination will help students make more informed decisions, especially if the course is optional, which was the same in my case uh, at SHIPCOM. Uh, this approach can definitely improve student satisfaction and um, engagement. Uh, also, as uh, an ICT engineering student, I had the chance to um, discover many courses uh, and uh, like study um, many, many different um, courses in many different domains. So it was really important to me to make links and uh, connections between uh, the different courses I had. Um, therefore, it is really important to, to understand that um, this NGSI course has uh, many um, connections to IoT, uh, robotics, uh, machine learning for people who are really fond of, of artificial intelligence, which is my case. Uh, also, it is really related to big data and many, many other courses. And um, it has also many real world applications like in smart cities, uh, smart agriculture, or uh, industry uh, 4.0, offering many career paths such as in IoT development uh, or data engineering. Um, an important thing to mention here is when students choose this course, um, they have um, like community engagement in this case. So they are provided with updates, they can contribute to um, open discussions and um, they don't miss out any um, news or um, or uh, like uh, emerging news cases. Um, so to effectively uh, learn and um, like fully grasp this uh, NGSI course, there is some background knowledge and prerequisites that are really uh, important. So uh, to truly understand uh, NGSI V2 uh, and later on uh, NGSI LD, um, uh, you should first, like as a student, uh, consider that it is crucial to have a clear understanding of the HTTP protocol and a RESTful API. It is really important. Um, also, to have a good understanding of JSON and JSON LD formats for exchanging data it is crucial. Um, uh, fully, uh, to fully grasp um, NGSI uh, and NGSI LD, uh, it is also uh, essential to have knowledge of linked data and semantic uh, web uh, concepts. And uh, finally, a basic Docker knowledge could certainly help as many tutorials offered by Fireware, by Fireware use it for um, setting up and running the software components. And um, there is definitely some, some things to avoid uh, in order to, to succeed in this course. 
which are mainly the lack of prerequisite knowledge. Because when we fail as students to have solid understanding of the fundamental concept, it can make it challenging for us to fully understand uh, this NGSI course. And um, also I insist on not overlooking data, data modeling uh, principle, uh, which um, involves modeling context information as entities with properties and uh, relationships, which uh, helps to better understand uh, the concepts of NGSI and later on um, NGSI LG. So um, also, uh, uh, ignoring linked data concepts would be um, really something to avoid. And what I emphasize uh, in this case is to avoid the lack of hands-on experience because theoretical knowledge is, uh, of course, important to have a deeper understanding, but the lack of practical knowledge will make it really challenging for a student to have the, the best understanding of the concepts. So uh, Fiware uh, provides um, many, many good resources and uh, tutorials which are deeply explained. And um, when we follow the steps, we, we can uh, really have uh, good knowledge and a hands-on experience. Yeah, and uh, that's all for my part. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asma. Uh, so, uh, um... If you're looking to uh, uh, introduce uh, um, Fireware into your uh, ICT uh, courses, then there are multiple ways which you could uh, uh, get into this. So uh, we're going to briefly close with uh, an overview of uh, Fireware iHubs and, uh, and the University Roadshow. Um, Fireware iHubs is a network which is uh, uh, worldwide of uh, institutions which have got a... Uh, um, a, a uh, strength in fireware, uh, for example, uh, the one in Tunisia is the, uh, the uh, Fireware iHub Bridge. Um, and you can look on the uh, um, Fireware website to find which uh, institution is near to you and which institution uh, covers the sort of domains you're interested in. Up on the right hand side, there's a uh, um, uh, selection of, uh, of, of iHubs from places like Greece or Spain or uh, Italy, which are all uh, dealing with agri-food, for, uh, for example. There's, uh, there's more uh, um, details in the, uh, the presentation, the link, but the, the thing here is that you can use your local iHub to actually get contacts to the people who understand what Fireware is, people who are using Fireware in the uh, um, uh, um, lo lo local region, and uh, able to uh, move, move, these, uh, move, move these things forward. Now, we also have a, uh, uh, a, a package directly for, uh, for universities to uh, to try and uh, offer fireware into the uh, uh, into universities, the fireware university uh, roadshow. You can find the details again uh, on the link. Once again, this is uh, uh, where where we're trying to uh, offer um, potentially a few uh, additional uh, resources, such as myself, maybe online, um, who can uh, help uh, um, uh, help plan the courses, help uh, move the uh, uh, move the uh, institution uh, uh, going going forward. Here is a list of uh, some of some of the uh, um, uh, universities who are already dealing with uh, um, uh, Fireware. You can see they come from multiple different uh, countries, from uh, um, uh, Spain to uh, um, Slovakia to uh, um, uh, Italy, Germany, and so on and so forth. Uh, and obviously, this is a incomplete list. It's it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. What do you get out of this? Well, um, you can uh, get the uh, uh, access to the uh, uh, Fireware community. You can get uh, um, access to the, uh, the Fireware Global Summit, for example, uh, or actually uh, um, uh, get uh, sessions remotely or uh, or directly, possibly um, from it, from uh, uh, the, from from the network it's, itself. We have uh, obviously a lot of uh, um, uh, contacts out there. We're looking to grow uh, 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 university courses. I hope this uh, uh, this session has been uh, of interest to you. And uh, we will now uh, close. So thank you very much for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.